How did you get into Muay Thai? I think I was about four or five. And then like, my dad's always, like he coached before he opened this gym and that. And I just remember coming home from school one day and like, I remember that he'd asked me a few times and I'd always been like, no, no. Like, I was like quite shy as a kid. And then I went one time and he said to me, if you come, like, you don't have to spar and all that. So I went and then I ended up sparring and everything went on the first session when I got there. And then since then, I just loved it. Like, I just trained right the way through then, like, all the time. Like, started, like, doing little fights when I was a kid and that. And then done, like, a bit of boxing in the middle and then, like, just came back to it as well. Like, after I'd done that. But from, like, that first day, that's the first memory I've got. Like, starting training, that's the first time I'd ever done anything. And I can still remember it in my head now. But then like, I remember as I got a bit older and like it was only quite local, like where my school was, it was on our estate where we used to train and all that, so like loads of lads who went to school with me, who was in my class and that in school, were all coming to the gym as well, like training with us and that, so I think there, was a, there must have been a good few, most of the lads who were in our school were in there training with us, like so, by like, as I got a bit older, like loads of them were doing and then obviously as I've carried on, like they all, it, it gets like 15, 16, everyone starts dropping off, don't they, and like, doing whatever else to do and where I just like try to stay with it like the way through. Why was that? Why did you stay with it? So like I'd, I'd like I'd obviously had like a little bit of time where I've like not came in the gym and that for a bit and like could have easily went down like the wrong path and that but um more just like my dad like telling me and like like trying to show me like the right path to go down and that and then just like myself like I could feel like I was letting myself down if I didn't follow through with it. I could put like years of my life into it and like just to like waste it away off nothing. Like I just um I got I hit that age where I was just like right like just gonna do it properly you now. I think I was about fifteen, sixteen when I like when when I decided that. Does your dad expect a lot from you? Um no, there's never no pressure to be honest. Like if I didn't want to come to the gym to come come in the gym and say and say like that would be it. Like he wouldn't like push me or nothing like that. Obviously now I'm fighting, like he's like, like he'll, I've got my time trying to come in and train, like I'm training like twice sometimes, three times a day, like that's different, but like if I weren't fighting and like I didn't turn up or I didn't do anything, anything like that, like there's no pressure there, obviously he does, he does expect a lot, like, and like he says to me all the time, how oh, fucking good I am on that, how far I can go on that, but like there's never, no, never, never been any pressure there for, to, for me to do it or anything like that. So. In the last Super Showdown, and more recently, Inferno, yeah. Fortitudo seems to have come on so far technically. It's always yeah. had a great reputation of being a strong gym. Yeah. Talk to me about the evolution and how it has become a more technical and known for having really, really skilled fighters. Um, it's just more like, so obviously like the more experience we're all getting, like we're opening each other on, and then like, down to like, my dad and like they they like go home and study and like come back and then we'll try new stuff all the time. So like whereas like most gyms you get like they're just like basic like pads, bags, spar and like not never like learning new techniques or nothing. Like we'll have classes in here sometimes where it's like just technique like practicing little sweeps, drills, like all stuff like that, like switching stance. Um so like I think like that's like it helps you step it up level, if you get what I mean. Um, but then, obviously, like as like my dad and uh, Ian and I are getting more experience, like that, that's only just bringing us up with them as well, isn't it? So, um, yeah, it's over the years, like it's just the way that you've been, like it's all starting to pay off with us now, isn't it? What kind of statement do you think the gym made at Super Showdown and Inferno? I think like I think like we all everyone already knew what we was about anyway and all that. Um, but then like if you look at the su the super show down, we had like Meg, she's like UK number one. We've got like Anthony now who's UK number four. Uh, Lee UK number I don't know I think he's number eight or nine or something like that. And then I'm number ten. So like we all fought on the same show and like four fights. That's only just four of our faces there in the in the top ten and then. We've got like Reese, we've got like loads of other lads who are like just up and coming as well. So like there's loads of talent like and then I think like the performances we all put on on them shows made everyone like sort of step back and think like like these are the real deal, these aren't they? <laughs>
Tell me about Luke's work ethic in this game. Mental. You, if they go for a run, Luke will be back first. You, you just, that's him, that's Luke, he's unbelievable, he's a machine. You see it on the pads, just relentless, sparring, relentless, he's, he's a machine. <laughs> There's no other words for him. And every, every single person in this gym will tell you the same. Yeah. He's 100%, he's unbelievable. Yeah. And it, it gives that standard for the, the younger lads, Anthony, Reese, and then even the girls, everyone do all look up to it, because it just sets that target, sets that pace, sets everyone there. And it's, you know, we've got new lads who just come in, kids who are looking up to him. That's, that's who all the kids got to look up to them. So, it's great. Ian described you as a machine. Yeah. Um, what do you think he means by that? I just push myself to my limits every day. Like, you can say and go through the motions and that, but like, like in my head, I, I always think like, someone's out there training harder than I am. Like, I can easily do like, I can easily finish my session now and like, that would be it, or I can do that extra round, like that extra one, like even like hill sprints, like you do like 20 hill sprints, I'll do 21, 22, just that extra 1% all the time, like it's not it's not much, it, does, like, it doesn't feel any difference when, at the time than doing like 20 to 21, but it's like that extra 1% for your mind as well, like you've got to train your mind as much as like you're training your body, haven't you? How do you do that? How do you train your mind? Um, I just listen to like, like motivational speakers and like stuff like that. Um Anyone in particular? I listen to a lot of David Goggins. Um just purely for like them days when you're tired and like you don't want to get up and that like and like he's going out and on like marathons every day at like three in the morning like and then it just shows you like your body can do whatever your mind tells it to do like if you're tired. Like, your, your body's not really tired, is it? Like, if your mind's not tired, then your body's not going to be tired. So, I think, like, especially in this sport, like, your mindset's got to be a massive part of it, hasn't it? Like, if your mind's not there, you can l lose fights like that just off, like, not being disciplined and that, can't you? Ian also mentioned that the, the juniors here look up to you as a role model. Yeah. Uh, how does that make you feel? Good, it's good to be able to, like, when I was younger, I'd, like, there wasn't really many people for me to look up to and that, like, there was, like, a couple, but, like, there was no one, like, younger, because I'm only, like, 21, so, like, there was no one, like, around that age where, like, it's not, where, like, they can look and go, I'm not far off that, like, I can push myself and get to, like, where he is, so, it's, it's good to be able to, like, teach them things that, like, I know and that and, like, help them come on and, hopefully, like, they can all get to, like, the level that we're all at now as well. How do you balance looking at things from a day-to-day -day perspective, like training today, and then look at the larger picture of your career? Do you look long-term? I just, so obviously when I'm training for a fight, I'm like, I'm just focused on the person I'm fighting. And then, <clears throat> more than anything, I just focus on myself. So like, every day I get up, I want to be a little bit better than, the, than what I was yesterday. So like, come like, six weeks fight camp, like I'm like, however many times better than like the way I was in my last fight. Um, How do you know if you're better than yesterday? It's more just your mind to be honest. Like I could train today and like my body could feel tired and sore and like I wouldn't be as sharp as what I was yesterday. But in my mind I'm like because I've got up and I've done it and like I've pushed it extra little bit. My mind's telling me like you're you one percent better today. But then obviously like after I've fought and like you sit back and look at that then like, that's when I'll start thinking about like the bigger picture, the next fight, or like the next fight and what I want to do after that. Uh, but then once like that fight gets confirmed and I've got a date, like even I've got another fight match like after that one, like all my focus just goes on on that fight. Then like I don't really try and think about anything on the outside. Mm -hmm. And how did you realise that you were gonna make a career with it? Um to be honest I never like there was never a point where I'd looked and forth. I was just fighting to enjoy it and then kept winning fights and then fighting better people winning fights and then I think it was only like about a year or two ago and then I just thought like I've had like <laughs> so many fights here I've won loads like and then I started fighting best people and stepping up and then it just comes to you like it does, it's not really something you go and look for is it like it'll just it just comes to you like all the hard work and that you do like it and then you keep winning fights like. It, it just comes here, you deserve it, doesn't it? And then when your hand gets raised, how does that feel? A few people have said to me, like, you don't look happy in that when, when like, you win. Um, 
but like I think it's because in my head I've pictured that scenario like a thousand times leading up to the fight. Like I feel like I've already won. If you get what I mean. So like when it actually happened, it's like I knew it was going to happen anyway. So um, I think I just to take a pair. I am as well. Like I'm laid back. I'm not really like. Like I don't really get real wild or not like that, so and then because I've pictured it before, it's like it's already happened, like it's just I knew it was gonna happen anyway, let's think about the next fight now. So what do the days after that victory feel like? Does it sink in a bit more? Do you celebrate? Um all different to be honest, like after my last fight, it was on a fourth on a Sunday. So I fought Sunday night and then obviously I'd had like a little shut and sweet after the fight and I didn't really go didn't go out or anything like that. Um and then I was up, I was back in the gym on Monday training, so I had no injuries or anything like that, so I didn't really get to, I didn't really enjoy that fight and then because I knew about my fight on Super Showdown I just thought let's just get a head start and everyone. So like from then I've trained right the way over Christmas and I haven't really had any time off. So how's your training camp gonna look from now to Super Showdown? So we've got like four weeks on four weeks tomorrow it is so like I'm already fit sharp now. Um just all it is now is just like managing the weight and just keep getting get my fitness up even more sharp and up as my weight drops I'll start to get sharper then as well but to be honest I feel feel strong and I feel like I could fight tomorrow if I wanted to mm. like I'm ready to go now. How does the sleep go on the night before? I have a boss sleep. <laughs> <laughs> it's the night before the weighing when I'm thinking about food then I'm like oh, I can't sleep my, my stomach's killing all that but the night, the night to the fight, I have to, like, I have to get all hope sometimes. Like, come on, you got to get up. You need to get your head on here, like you're fighting soon. Um, I have a boss sleep. I think on, on my last fight, I slept from like eleven to like na- nine in the morning or something like that. I had a boss sleep, um, but I, I never really struggled to sleep before the fight. I'm not really, I'm not really a nervous person. Yeah. Um, so, what can we expect at the uh, Super Showdown? I've got a good fight, um, French lad. He, um, I've not really, I don't really watch anyone who fights to be honest, I've not really seen much on him. Um, all I know that he likes to come forward, so that plays into my hands to be honest, if he's going to come forward and try and fight. Um, I'm not really sure, how, I don't really like to say how it's going to go, like I don't really, that's not really what crosses me, like I, I just know like I'm capable of adapting to whatever style he's going to bring on the night, so whatever he's got planned or whatever his game plan is, like I, I know I'm gonna be able to adapt to that and like be able to beat him on any angle, or like whatever angle he comes at. You don't seem to ever make it personal. No, I don't. I don't see the point unless someone else makes it personal with me first. Like we're only in there to do the same thing. It's that to job at the end of the day, isn't it? Obviously, I want to date him and I want to knock him out, but there's no point to make it personal with him. Like he hasn't. Done, we're only in there for the same reason to try and get higher up and like keep winning to get up. So. Yeah, obviously, like when I get in there, like I, I want to hurt him badly, but like it's nothing to do with him. Like I'm not personally wanting to hurt him. I just want to hurt someone who's in the ring with me. Do you always know when you've hurt him? Yeah, like I know, I know off like the shot that lands, and then I and I set back from him and look, and then I know if the hurt. Um, but then I just try and stay composed, even though I hurt them most of the time. If you hate someone, like they're gonna try and throw something wild back at you, so you've just gotta stay composed all the time and like even when I'm a sack and I'm thinking about what he might throw back or anything like that, so um I just try and stay composed after I've hurt someone. What are you looking for? If it's not a big reaction, what are you looking for to see that hurt you? Their eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Um I think any time you hate someone you can tell by their eyes, like I d I don't even know how to explain what they look like, but like I know by like looking someone in the eye like like I've hurt him there, or like little, little, little movements to do in that, like to try and like, try and like not like let me get onto it. It's hard to explain, but like it, I just know like once I've hurt someone, like I can just tell straight away, and then I know whether to step in and go for it or step back and then you stay composed and pick pick him off with something else. Is it tempting to rush in then? Yeah, of course. Like as soon as you hit someone, you just want to run at them throwing bombs, don't you? And knock them out, but. In in this game, like we're professionals, aren't we? At the end of the day, like we've got to stay composed and like pick the right shots off and not not get it back. Like I think in my head, like if I don't need to get it, I'm not gonna get it. Like if he can't hit me, he can't beat me. So when was your when was your debut? You see that today? Um, it's a funny story. To be honest, it weren't meant to be. It weren't meant to be um, 
we weren't planned or anything like that. I think I was about 15. Um, I was still in school, I was in like year 10 in school or something like that. It's mad thinking about it now. Um, and we went down to a show in Melton Mowbray, like four hours away. And I'd only had one in class fight before that, and I just had junior fights before that. I got down there, I'd had like my shinies and my bag and my gloves, I was fighting in class five ones. Um, and as soon as we got down there, um, we had like an hour or two before the show started. So we were just like in the venue like that, and then my dad came over to me and went, um, You're just gonna fight C class, to be honest. And I was like, I remember in my head, I was like, Yeah, it's sad, but in my head, I was like, Shit, like, I can't fight C class here, I never, don't know what it feels like, or nothing like that. And then I fought a Spanish lad, I was only like 15, he had like tattoos on his neck, he had tattoos there. My dad went, he's only, um, he's only like 17 or something like that, he's only like a year or two older than you. But I'd always four people older than me anyway, so. And in the gym, I'd been sparring like grown men since I was like 15. So I'd fought and all that, and then I, that, was the, that was the fight I got beat my first fight against him. And I remember I'd never been at the ride in my life, like, I just, it was a proper shock, you know, like going from like 12 well, ounce gloves, whatever, to like 8 ounce gloves, C-class, getting it in the face proper hard, I was like, um, and then found out after the fight, the lad was like 20 or 21 or something. My dad didn't tell me because he, he knew me had to fall off. Like, but uh, I had the fight against him. And then I think it was more just like the nerves, like last minute, like it just went like that. I lost the fight probably in my own head before I'd even got in there. But I had him a rematch about a year later and beat him the same lad. So um, he's on my mind for like a year yeah. or two and, and, and I got to beat him then. Did anything sort of change in your head after losing that first fight and did your approach your training yeah. change? Yeah, definitely. Like, I think I took it a bit more serious then. Whereas like, I was just coming in like training in the class, maybe doing like a little run on a Tuesday Thursday, I weren't really taking it serious. But to be honest, like, up until my last like three, four fights I wasn't. Yeah. Mm. But like I think losing that fight made me push a bit harder because like that feeling of losing a fight is like the worst feeling in the world. So like even now and I'm thinking I'm thinking I can't lose a fight. Like I can't, like it's the worst feeling ever. So I think that's why like losing's as horrible as it is, it's like quite important to lose early. So you know what it feels like, so you can like push yourself like now at this point, not to lose. So you're not emotional after winning, are you no. emotional after losing? Yeah, I think like you're more just disappointed than yourself after losing to be honest. Um, you get all in force on for it, like I could have done more, I could have done this, could have done that. What have I done this, I would have beat him. So obviously it's like like that point, that perspective of it, but I'm never like never like crying or nothing like that after them. Just like you'd be more just disappointed in yourself or like like you just think I could have done this, could have done that, could have done more in training. Um, but then like I think that just gives you like the little edge to like get back in training and push yourself even more, doesn't it? As we talked about it being a professional sport, the time that you've been. Have you noticed it change and become more professional? Yeah, definitely. Like I think from like when I was a kid, I'd go on to watch shows and all that. Like I don't think people used to say it as serious as what they do now. Whereas like now everyone's like proper athletes, aren't they? Like taking it dead seriously. Like, training like twice a day. Most people are now, aren't they? Who are at the level that we're at? So I think like from like this level, like ten years ago. I think like everyone had like day jobs and just going to the gym, like it was like a hobby, weren't it? But now, like, if you look at how many people are making a career out of it, it's like, well, more professional than like back then, isn't it? What does the future look like? Um, to be honest, it's not something like, it's not something I try and think too much about, because like, I don't try and think too much about it, because if things don't go your way and stuff like that, then, um, like, it's something you can't control, but like, in, in my head, I just want to keep winning. And then like you can't really at my point now you can't really pick and choose what what's what, what he wants or not like that you gotta just keep winning and hopefully like you get the opportunities that you deserve after like winning them fights so if I can keep winning by the end of the year I'd keep moving up them rankings try and get in like the top five in the rankings in the country and then see what happens for me then obviously my goal is to try and get in like the big shows like one, one championship and like stuff like that but for now I just need to keep winning just keep training hard and then. I'm only young, it's gonna pay off in like a couple of years, isn't it? I've been doing loads of like strength and conditioning and stuff like that, so I think um, as I'm getting older and more mature, like I'm starting to get like stronger and stuff like that. Um, but then I'm always just looking to improve and anything I can like 
I'm just there, I just, I'm like, I turn up to like learn every day, so like, my dad and like Ian and I'll point out stuff I need to work on, then like, that's what I'll work on then. I don't really like to pick and choose what I want to work on myself. Um, but like, I'm not, like, even now, I'm coming every day and I'm getting sold. You're doing this long, you're doing that long, you're doing this long, like, and like, people who watch me at pads or fighting that, that won't see it, but like, every little detail in here, like, that's what, that's how far we, we get pushed.